Hey there, everybody. Hey, Graham. Uh, Graham, I'm hoping you could help me out with something. Uh, so I played uh, just one of the um, tournaments over at BBO. And overall, I think I played okay. But two out of the eight hands, I just totally bombed. And uh, <laughs> bombing two out of eight is usually a good day for me. But these two, looking at it, I felt or I wondered if I noticed a pattern and it felt like this might be a mistake that I often make. And I was wondering if it's a mistake you see other learners making or perhaps am I misreading the lesson here? Um, I don't know if there'll be enough inf info in this hand, but I thought to ask. Okay. All right. So I... Uh, a little bit scared to share, but so here is here is the the daily results. I'm doing fine. One, two, three, then hand four, <laughs> zero percent, mm. and then doing fine. One, five, six, seven, hand eight, three point six percent, and. Both of those, you know, they just take the wind out of my my sail. I felt like I'm building momentum. Looking over it afterwards, I go, oh, gosh, well, I noticed two things in common. And also compared to everyone else who bid these hands, I okay. had a decent hand and I was attached to playing in game. Am I perhaps reading that right? Might there be something else there? Is this something that we learners do or is this something else and I'm even further lost than I thought? Okay. Right. I understand the question. Good question. So a couple of, two or three comments. First of all, 10 is enough. Sure. Tell what's um, you can get a bad hand and, and another one comes along five hands later and so you cement it in your mind that's bad. It just bridge isn't like that. It's up and down all over the place. Okay. Likewise, you can sometimes get a good score and think, oh, I'm doing the right thing here, but long term it might, might not be winning strategy. Right. So you need enough information. But what you're doing, it, when you do have enough information, I think what you're doing is just invaluable. And um, I, what I do is I find it helpful to look at all my different contracts and look at the average score on each different contract. Now I've got I've got my little system of doing that, but you can do that yourself. Um, you can put it on a spreadsheet or or some figure out some way of doing it, and you'll probably be surprised. You'll probably be surprised. Now what I've found mm. uh, is. For myself, uh, I found that um, I was defending too many one no Trump contracts when nobody was vulnerable. Now, when I was looking at one hand or three hands or 20 hands, it wasn't enough. But when I had all my results, when I scanned through everything, then I start to see little patterns. And I said, well, that's not working for you. Or what's what's the average score for being in a game contract not making not not looking at whether it makes or not just what's your average score for being in game right now in your case you might find you bid four hearts there and four spades and they were both bad now you might find that when you look at all your scores your average score for bidding being in a game might be low and you might start to question yourself and say, oh, hang on, maybe I'm bidding too many games here. Uh, and I think that's just a fantastic thing to do. Don't, mm. don't, don't focus on one hand, but yes, do look for patterns. Um, I know a few people who do this um, analysis and you know, if you're really serious about bridge or even semi-serious about bridge, I just can't see how you can not do this. Mm. How can you not? And right. This is valuable. And you, will, you will find patterns. And maybe if you're out there watching and think, oh, no, that's too much. It's kind of fun, you know. 
Mm. It doesn't take long. You can figure out, you'll figure out some way of doing it on your computer or your spreadsheet or what have you. Just write them all down. And, and in a, you'll find it takes a couple of weeks, three weeks, and it, that's enough. And you'll start to notice things. That's helpful, Graham. And uh, yeah, I feel inspired to do that. It's, um, yeah, I, it's, it's reminding us the, the introspection that's needed not just after one hand or one session, but as, a, as part of our ongoing process of playing and that that part of the process can be enjoyable. Yeah, it should be enjoyable. It shouldn't be a chore. We should, you know, the people I know who do this, they're excited about it. They uh, finish the session and they, oh, wow. And they, you know, it doesn't take long, a few minutes, and you've written it all down. And after a while you get, oh, wow, look, look, look. Oh, look what's happening here. Or, you know, it might be everybody loves week two openings, for example. Okay, so we open our week twos and we love this. And when it's great, we think, oh, the week two worked. Or, but it might be that we're doing it too much. And if you look at your average score when you open the bidding a week two in spades, and you find, well, it's actually you know, 38%. There's no lesson. You can't go to a lesson. You can't go to a teacher. There's nothing you can do that's more instructive than looking at your own results and saying, damn, this isn't working. <laughs> but as you remind us, our own results over one day or just a few cherry-picked hands aren't enough. That that might mislead us as much as reveal something. But to find our way to look for the longer patterns. It's on a, on a separate aside, I'm just going to waffle on here for a second. So don't, um, you know, you're watching the video and what have you. It's been great. Thanks very much. But interestingly, I just started playing backgammon a few weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. And as I'm really enjoying it. It's really quite is that your, your backgammon partner is uh, pinging you right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what I've found is I, I get into this backgammon situation, I make a mistake, and it's, such, it's quite a complicated game. And I found myself always making mistakes. And I, was, I look at one, and then two days later, I can't remember the situation, and I end up making the same mistake. So I've just started, uh, it's kind of messy, but I've just started working out my own way of recording my backgammon errors Mm. And I've started put, putting them in a little thing so I can I can just flick through and say, oh, yeah. Oh, wow, hang on a second. I'm not good. I'm not hitting the five spot. I'm not making my five point often enough. And mm. it's staring out at me like a sore thumb after a very short time. So, you know, Gra Graham, just uh, waffling off your waffle, you know, being completely honest, there's no way, if I'm being honest with myself, there's no way I'm going to keep track of all of the hands th that I play. I know the way that you do. But might I do something similar perhaps to what you described with backgammon? Maybe I can, you know, hands like this, the ones where I just totally whiff and burn, you know, the crash and burners, at least those I can collect. And maybe once a month, just look back at, all right, these are the ones, the, the sub five percenters. Is there at least a pattern in those? If they're all over the place, maybe that just happens sometimes. But if I can spot a pattern over time in the ones that I really struggle with. Sure. Uh, you've got to be careful because sometimes if you're looking at your four spade contracts or what have you, yeah, because it's bad, there might be a whole lot of good ones as well. Right. So it's got to be an average thing. Right. But, right. but certainly, I mean, you could just, if you're playing a session, you're only going to be in four spades, four hearts or four spades, for example. You could just have a little notepad and say four hearts mm. and, the, and the score was 22%. Four spades and the score was 83%. So focus on one area that you're interested in right. rather than everything. So right. this month I'm going to deal with um, game contracts. Right, right. It's 
take you take you a minute, take you two minutes at the end of the session, and in a few weeks you'd know. Mm, that's helpful to to choose a, a spotlight, to choose a theme for a month. Say this is play all play all I want, but maybe take an extra note for any time this particular situation happens. Yeah, look, and have you ever played Wordle or Squirtle or Diddle or Squaddle or whatever it is? Even the worst it, 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 Yep, it, it got its hook in me, <laughs> like oh, everyone yeah. else. Well, I mean, it's great. I mean, it's probably yeah. really good and it's really fun and everything. I can imagine sitting there with a cup of coffee playing diddly <laughs> squat or whatever it is. But, you know, if you're going to sit there with a cup of coffee and do something to get your brain going. Make it better. Make it this. Sit there with your cup of coffee and do the thing. And 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 um, you know, I'm not. I'm sure squiggle is good, but this is good too. <laughs> Apologies to uh, the <laughs> developers of Squiggle, aka I, I think Wordle. Um, yeah, yeah, Wordle. If anyone, if anyone is still watching at this point, if we haven't scared away anyone, <laughs> everyone at this point. Uh, especially for the learners out there, um, what has worked for you for analyzing your results beyond a specific hand or even a specific session or day? Have you found any tools that you've liked? Leave a comment. Uh, as always, reach out by email. We love hearing from you. And uh, thanks for watching. Thank you, Graham. Yep. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Better get to the backgammon and I have uh, my squiggle. <laughs> <laughs> See you. See you.